By the end of the video, the massive hand has flicked the victim into a cafe uh, that goes under the name Petit Colon, which translates from the French as little colonist or little settler. Uh, okay. <laughs> This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com forward slash blaze and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. Yes, more on them in a bit. Oh, welcome back. You're here. Good to see you again. I can't really see you. You're behind the camera. I probably don't know you. If I do know you, hello, friends. More shameless promotions, blasphemous burgers, and bushy Brazilians. If you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. How have you not clicked off already? Thank you so much. Uh, what happens is Danny writes me a script. I shall read the script. And Sam, our brilliant video producer, is going to just... I don't know why that's the sound for sprinkling, but he's going to sprinkle in those fine vintage memes. As the young Chinese woman, Shou Yuing, steps daintily along the streets of Zhengzhou in central China's Henan province, she finds herself facing the same kind of problem that I'm sure affects every business blaze viewer on a daily basis. I mean, most of you probably have a very similar geographic... Though. You can't get YouTube in China, can you? It doesn't work there. You have to use, like, a VPN. Nope, nope, stop talking, go to jail. Sometimes being incredibly beautiful can just be so damn exhausting. Oh boy, do I know it, Danny! Shou Yuing wishes that she could just go out of business without being constantly gawped at by strange men. Earlier today, one guy even collapsed on his knees in sheer admiration of her beauty, and she had to step over the fool with a touch of mild irritation. <laughs> Get out of my way, you ugly peasant! <laughs> Ugly people who don't have to deal with this sort of bullshit don't realize how lucky they are. What Shou Yuing didn't realize was that the guy who collapsed had just suffered from a sudden heart attack and was in need of urgent medical attention that he would never receive. And the main reason that she was attracting so many curious stares is because her mischievous younger sister had drawn a giant hairy cock of balls on her forehead while Shou Yuing had been napping earlier in the day. Yeah, that guy saw it. He was like so offended by a cock and balls that he had a heart attack. That is a man with a weak constitution. Am I right, Peter? Ah, just like a woman. Oblivious to all of this, Shou Yuang had been begin. Oblivious to all of this, Shou Yuang had begun to feel a little peckish, but suddenly realized that she'd left her purse at home. However, she stops at a sign outside a Korean restaurant, which makes her realize that being stunningly beautiful might just have the occasional advantage. The restaurant is giving away 50 completely free meals every day for the whole month ahead, and the lucky 50 daily winners aren't just chosen by a random lottery. The free meals are dished out to the people who are deemed to be most good-looking by the restaurants. <laughs> it's a very weird competition. Quite incredibly, this was a genuine promotion run by the Jeju Island restaurant in Zhengzhou in early 2014. Yeah, I mean, but China's different, right? They have different rules. Like, obviously, like, in Europe, or I guess I mean, people would be like, whoa, 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 <laughs> steady on. It's <laughs> a bit weird, isn't it? But China's really different. They have different cultural standards and stuff like that. I mean, obviously. <laughs> like, as we lay in it, it's like, that's really f***ed up. <laughs> they probably look at us and be like, guys, that is really f***ed and uh, that's just how it is. Nope, nope, stop talking, go to jail. The Payboy face deal encouraged diners to strut through the restaurant doors and shove their faces into a scanner before sitting down and ordering their meals. As they tuck into some fine Korean cuisine, their photographs are reviewed in the beauty identification area of the restaurants by a team of local plastic surgeons who rate each face across four categories. Face, eyes, mouth and nose. Well, that's a bit of a weird thing, isn't it? Like, well, face definitely includes the eyes, mouth, and nose. What happens if you've got an incredibly beautiful face, but, yeah, your ears aren't rated, and you just have, like, uh, ears of some sort of terrible, terrible hobbit? I don't know what a hobbit is, because I've, of course, not read The Hobbit, and I never will, but I assume it's ugly. Is a hobbit ugly? What's that other one? The little guy, who's like a, uh, is, I don't know, he's like, Oh, master! That guy. What if you've got ears like that guy? That's not good. Or what about if you've got ears like that weird dwarf thing? Not dwarf, because that's a real thing. A real, dwarves are real people. I know that. Stop being insensitive. I mean the little, small creature from Harry Potter. I think his name was Dobby or something. What if you've got ears like Dobby? <laughs> Dobby, shush, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to offend you or anything. When I read the Harry Potter books, Dobby in my mind looks like a weird dark Furby. 
And then I saw the Harry Potter movie, the one where, I, I mean, I don't think I've seen it, but I've seen clips of it, because of course I have. And Dobby looked completely different, and I felt so betrayed. <laughs> I was a child, of course. The results are later displayed on an electronic board for everyone in the restaurant to see, and every 30 minutes, the top five pre uh, pretty scorers in that time frame are informed that they've got their meal for free, with all of the ugly diners getting clobbered with a bill to pay. That proved to be bad news for Shouying, who, to her amazement, came bottom of the list and had to spend the next couple of hours washing the dishes like a peasant. Why didn't she just pay for the meal? <laughs> They must have got the photographs mixed up or something. Well, also she had a cock drawn on her face, didn't she? I mean, I, that's not going to add to your attractiveness, is it? If I drew a cock on my face, it's not like suddenly you're going to be like, Simon, you look so much ha more handsome with a giant cock on your face. It'd be just weird, wouldn't it? The whole thing appeared to be a partnership promotion between the restaurant and the plastic surgeons who took the opportunity to advertise their own services to customers who didn't make the cut. So if you were deemed too ugly to receive a free meal, they would recommend that you get your face fixed. And with a bit of luck, you might get some free nosh next time. It's not surprising yet, but plastic surgery is probably more expensive than a Korean meal, isn't it? I mean, it just is, isn't it? It's not surprising that such a highly subjective deal attracted such a stack of complaints, and even the local authorities weighed in when they ordered Jeju Island to remove the promotional billboard as they felt it was damaging the city's reputation, although the actual promotion was allowed to run the full five courses. You've got to be wary of those Chinese authorities. I was reading on BBC this morning that there was some Chinese billionaire who got sentenced like 18 years in prison for like inciting mischief because he did something that the government didn't like. And I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> China, that, 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 I mean, that sucks. <laughs> nope, nope, stop talking, go to jail. Not everyone was a critic, though. One confident customer asked on social media, does that mean I get to eat for free every time I go? Well, I suppose that means if uh, it depends if other more beautiful people are eating there, doesn't it? But it surely must have been an ex exercise in deep humiliation if, say, you were the only diner in a party of five friends who was not judged good-looking enough to get a free meal. And the only consolation was a recommendation to get some plastic surgery done. Oh, no! Still, if you were an overweight male diner who felt like you had no chance at Jeju Islands, in the very same year you could instead hop over to Na Huo Eatery in Chongqing in southwest China. They were running a promotion in which men weighing over 308 pounds or 22 stone. That's really helpful, Danny. Give me two imperial measurements. Now, fortunately, I learned a trick for converting pounds into kilograms. Let's say it's 308 pounds, so you take off 10%, which makes it 269 roughly, and then you divide it in half, which 269 divided in half is 134. So 134 kilograms. It's pretty heavy. They got to eat for free. They were also suffering other tricks. Did I mention the trick? You take off 10% and divide it in half. You're welcome, world. They were also offering free meals to women, but only if they were super thin, weighing less than 76 pounds or five and a half stuff for sake. 76 pounds 10 percent off that is 7.6 off so 69 or 68 point something so let's call it 69 which is about 34 kilos holy shit, that is light that doesn't seem entirely right to me but i suppose it would have saved a fortune for tinkerbell if she'd ever decided to get jiggy with the stay puffed marshmallow man yes danny except none of those things are real oh of course most marketing promotions tend sensibly to stay within the boundaries of good taste and decency and respect <laughs> tell that to peter am i right and pissing off your target audience isn't generally perceived to be a good idea but maybe maybe some of those other misguided and utterly shameless attempts at drumming up publicity at least achieve some kind of immor immortality for the business in question ah immortality a subject close to my heart as regular viewers will know after all nobody bothers to look back at the boring old promotions that might actually have been quite good we prefer to look back instead at the shameless shows i'm into that shit. And maybe that is a bit of a shame, but we might as well carry on now that we've started. Save the whale with Groupon. The Super Bowl commercial breaks are often a breeding ground for companies trying to outdo each other with the kinds of outrageous and wildly expensive ads that you wouldn't normally get to see during the rest of the year. I watch these often, and some of them are really good, and some of them are really And I'm like, I just, it's, I don't get it. I don't get it. It's just, it's weird. But I mean, hang on, wait a minute. Obviously, I do get it because I actually actively seek out those commercials and what. I mean, usually they're for like American cars, which I'm just not going to buy, or like 
American beer. Like, one of them was Budweiser, and it's like, yeah, well, I'm not gonna drink that, am I? Because it's a bit sh**. Yeah, yeah, Jeep. Cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get a Jeep as soon as Toyota have run out of cars. And it's not hard to see why. With only a handful of rare exceptions, the Super Bowl has come out on top of the TV ratings every year for decades. A bit like the sheepdog trial show One Man and His Dog over here in the UK. That sounds uh, regularly pulling in over 100 million viewers over the last decade, 29 of the top 30 most watched US broadcasts in history are all Super Bowls. The odd one out was the finale of the war comedy drama MASH in 1983. Didn't anyone bother tuning in to the moon landing in 1969, or did it clash with the Super Bowl? Really? The finale of MASH? got more people in the US watching than the moon landing? I don't believe it. I mean, I literally don't believe it. That can't be right, surely. That did wrong. Back in 2011, the cost for a single 30-second ad spot during the Super Bowl was $3 million, and the Daily Deal's website Groupon made their Super Bowl debut that year, having recently enjoyed a period of rapid growth with a series of three themed ads for $9 million. I have to say, 30 seconds for $3 million. I know $3 million is a lot of money, but that doesn't actually seem outrageous at all, does it? That was 10 years ago, though, so it's probably more now. But that doesn't seem crazy. Unusually, though, the first ad seemed to issue the stock theatrics of the traditional wacky Super Bowl ad in favor of spreading awareness on Chinese government oppression and genocide in Tibet. Nice one, Groupon. Yeah, Groupon, you heroes. Well done. I'm sure that made a huge difference. Because there's no longer any problems in Tibet, and there's no more government oppression in China. At all. Anywhere in those two countries. <laughs> there is more than ever, <laughs> allegedly. Nope, nope, stop talking, go to jail. Over footage of the epic landscape of Tibet, the somber narration of actor and comedian Timothy Hutton kicks in. Mountainous Tibet, one of the most beautiful places in the world. The people of Tibet are in trouble. Their very culture is in jeopardy. Tibet was invaded by the Chinese government in 1950, stripping the Tibetan people of their rights and killing hundreds of thousands of them in the process. At this point, every concerned citizen would be reaching out for a notepad so they can record the details of where to send their donations, or at the very least they'd recognize a good time for a toilet break before the game comes on. I am very curious as to what this intended is intended to achieve, and then how Groupon are going to f*** it up so extraordinarily that it makes it into a business place. How exciting. But wait, there's a twist. The ad cuts to a scene of jolly Timothy Hutton sitting in a restaurant. He pipes up. But they still whip up an amazing fish curry. And since 200 of us bought at Groupon.com, we're each getting $30 worth of Tibetan food for just $15 at Himalayan restaurant in Chicago. You what? That is savage. How did you think this was? That's it. I mean, I, know, I get how like normal ads I mean, even then, I'm like, how did this get approved to go on, like, a late spot on TV that no one really watches? How the f*** does this get approved for the f Super Bowl? I mean, Christ. Hmm. Maybe the second ad in the sequence will strike a more sympathetic tone. This time, British actress Elizabeth Hurley is drawing our attention to the devastation of Brazil's rainforest. She explains, The Brazilian rainforest is one of nature's most lush ecosystems. The rainforest is irreplaceable, yet rampant deforestation is threatening this national treasure. She soon perks up a bit, though, when we cut to a scene in a salon. But not all deforestation is bad. And since 100 of us bought at Groupon.com, we're all saving 50% on a Brazilian wax at Completely Bare in New York City. You what? Oh, good lord, no. For a final comical flourish, we hear the sound of a woman yelping in the background against the sound of a wax strip getting yanked off. My, my, this is a... Uh... I mean, normally it's like they do something that's really racist or something, but this is just like old school, straight up untasteful. Or is it distasteful? I feel like that's not the right word for when something is like, eesh, ooh. I mean, cringe, yes, but like, ooh, it's just, it, that's just distasteful. Eesh. The complaints were already flooding in thick and fast before we even got to the third and final ad in the sequence. This time, actor Cooper Gooding Jr. was banging on about saving the whale or something. His sober narration kicks off with whales. They're the most spectacular creatures on the planet. Today, the numbers are dwindling. Somebody's got to save them. You can get on Groupon. Whale fin oil, because a hundred of us bought. Uh, the ad shift tone when he concludes his ponderous monologue with... But it's more fun watching them jumping, playing... And since 100 of us bought at Groupon.com, we're each getting an $86 whale-watching cruise for just $49. How dare you! 
The commercials didn't seem to go down so well with the Super Bowl audience, as many of us pointed out the group on appeared to have spent $9 million on shedding customers with their tone-deaf promotions. Yeah, it's like, it's like Groupon. You just, I mean, it's a bit exploitative, isn't it? I mean, it is. It definitely is, allegedly. In my opinion. The Tibetans weren't very impressed with the first ad as they felt that their plight had been cheapened to become the punchline of a joke about a $15 coupon. And they were absolutely f***ing correct. <laughs> the Chinese government worked big fags either. Good news, no one cares. <laughs> Groupon were like, yeah, cool. Cool story, bro. As they didn't like the implication that Tibet was in trouble. Ah, no one cares. In short, barely any of the 111 million Super Bowl viewers were impressed on any level. And that's a shame, because Groupon apparently had genuine philanthropic intentions at heart. They were just completely lost in a series of ads which fell completely flat. If anyone had bothered to visit the Groupon website at the time, they would have encu been encouraged to make donations to the Tibet Fund, the Rainforest Network, and Greenpeace. And Groupon had generously agreed to match all donations up to a thousand dollars. That is, that is really nice. But you should have mentioned that in the ad and not cheapens people's plights. Group on. But you didn't. I really don't think you need 2020 eyesight, 2020 vision, like retrospective. But what's it called? You know, when you're like, oh yeah, Simon, you're so smart because oh, you know about it from the future, where Daddy's being sarcastic about it. Look, I'd have seen this and been like, boys, what? <laughs> the fuck is he talking about? The commercials were directed by the usually brilliant comic genius Christopher Guest, who practically invented the mockumentary uh, with the seminal piece of work This Is Spinal Tap in 1984. And he had decided to go with spoof ads, which took the piss out of disingenuous appeals for charitable causes delivered by wealthy celebrities who probably didn't really give a uh, Yeah, but nobody got the joke. Uh, but nobody bothered to explain the joke or the true purpose behind the ads. They might have worked better if delivered to a smaller online audience who were more clued up on Groupon's intentions. But delivering them to 111 baffled Super Bowl viewers just left more than a nasty taste of fish curry in the mouth. But a bomb bomb. Now, before we continue with today's, might I say, glorious video, let us take a moment to profess our love for Squarespace. And by profess I love, by our love I mean it's time for today's sponsor Squarespace who make this all possible. And of course, without you dear viewers, there would be no views, there would be no sponsors, there would be no glorious capitalist circle of life. So, Squarespace. You've heard me talk about Squarespace before. It's the perfect place if you want to make a website, obviously. Look, whether you want to start from scratch, if you've got some sort of design chops or you're skilled in that department, unlike your boy here, well, Squarespace, they are allow you to basically make a website from scratch. Now look, that is nothing I would ever attempt in my entire life because I am an incompetent. So what I would do, and what I have done, indeed for my personal website, simonwhistler.com, you can see that I built a Squarespace website using a template. You just go in there, you select a template that looks all pretty, and you're like, mm, let's, you know, customize that to my needs, put my name in the top left. I used one of my videos blurred out as a background for the entire website, and it looks awesome. And uh, bear in mind, I made that myself. No one at Squarespace was like, oh, we'll help you out because you're like working as with a sponsor thing. It's like, no, 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 they just, they just said, go make a website. And I was like, okay. It was very, very easy. And I have no skills. I mean, I feel like I'm really banging home about how unskilled I am, but I still managed. There's things I have to say. What do I have to say? Oh, there's all sorts of extra stuff that Squarespace offers. I have to say, honestly, uh, I'm not using a ton of this right now. I could see how it would work. Uh, member areas, you can set up like a member area for this channel. I don't know, I'll think about it, maybe, probably not. But I mean, it's nice that it's there if you run a website that is conductive to that. Email campaigns, I should actually do that because I'm so sh at sending emails and like emailing my subscribers. I know I should do a better job of it, I really should. This just reminds me and makes me feel bad about myself, but it's nice to have it as a feature. Collect donations, social sharing, of course you've got to use that one, analytics, blogging tools, all of that great stuff. So, what do you have to do to get- oh, you can also make a shop on Squarespace. Did I even mention that? Like, if you want to sell something. Amazing. So when you're ready to get started on the next project of yours, big or small, it's got to be with Squarespace if it involves a website. Right now you can go to squarespace.com for a free trial. Uh-huh, fantastic. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash blaze and you'll get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Fantastic. And let's get back to today's glorious video. Groupon founder, Andrew Mason later apologized. We hate that we offended people and we're very sorry that we did. It's the last thing we wanted. We've listened to your feedback and since we don't see the point of continuing to anger people, we're pulling the ads. Well, 
they already went out to 111 million people, Andy. So, uh, you know, bit late, mate, isn't it? It's possible the Groupon and Christopher Guest just didn't have enough time to spot the problems with the rushed commercials. They only managed to secure the Super Bowl ad spots at the very last minute when another advertiser pulled out. Yeah, but you managed to secure Elizabeth Hurley and Cooper Gooding Jr. somehow. I mean, surely you'd just be like, hey, 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 you, random man, on the street, hey, hey, come over here, I'll give you 50 bucks. Watch this commercial. Tell us if we're insane. it would be like, guys, you're insane. Oh, okay. Oh, ho. Oh, you crazy! Maybe you should ask someone out. Maybe you should do a focus group or something. I don't know. I'm just a man on the street. Why are you asking me? Please, stop. <laughs> but it's good to see that they didn't keep the gag running the following year with an ad which highlights just how sea turtles have been helping to balance the ocean's ecosystem for millions of years, but are now facing extinctions. They're running out of land for nesting due to coastal developments, vehicle traffic on beaches, and general nuisance caused by plagues of humans. Yet, they also smell really nice. And since two people bought a group on, they're each getting two bottles of rotting turtle fragrance for twice the price. Danny, no! Volkswagen gets a slap. You'd think the Volkswagen would be a bit more careful than most. Founded by the Nazis in 1937 as part of an effort to get the affordable new Beetle into the garages of every German home, the company is intensely aware of its historic origins and its guilt in profiting from the enslavement of Holocaust victims during the Nazi regime. But they've had a good 80 years to reflect on this. And so it's quite extraordinary that as recently as 2020, they released an online ad which might have made even Hitler raise an eyebrow if they'd been heading up the marketing division at the time. <laughs> Holy sh**, what is this gonna be? Promoted on Instagram and Facebook to launch the arrival of the new Golf 2020 series in Germany, the short 10-second video features a sharply dressed, dark-skinned guy minding his own business on a sidewalk in Buenos Aires, right next to a shiny new yellow VW Golf. Suddenly, a giant disembodied hand appears out of nowhere and starts prodding and poking and flicking the helpless man all over the sidewalk as we hear mocking laughter in the background. And it's a giant white hand. Okay, I mean, that's fine so far. I don't really think, like, I think we could ignore the races unless, like, something really intense is about to. I get the feeling this isn't the end of the story, is it, Whistle? So just carry on reading. Just do it! By the end of the video, the massive hand has flicked the victim into a cafe uh, that goes under the name Petit Colon, which translates from the French as little colonist or little settler. Uh, okay. <laughs> And many people were quick to point out that the giant hand appeared to be making something resembling a white power gesture as it ruthlessly flicks the black man into a cafe for colonists. Uh, this is just a bit weird. I, I mean, it's weird so far. You might think it'd be impossible to cram anything else offensive into just a short 10 seconds, but wait, there's more. The ad concludes with the new golf fading into the screen, which as you might be able to guess, translates as the new golf. But the letters fade at slightly different times, and for a brief moment, the only letters visible on screen spell out the German equivalent of the N-word. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> just got real i mean then you add this all together and you're like oh my god what are you doing what the hell is even that so what in the name of hitler's missing right testicle with all well, volkswagen playing out here well to put the ad in some sort of context though admittedly not very much context it was part of another it was part of a series of themed ads depicting an interracial couple playing silly pranks on one another for example in one of the ads the white woman fools the black guy into thinking that he's got a parking ticket slapped on the windscreen of his new vw golf when in fact it's just a soppy love letter Hilarious. But that still doesn't begin to explain what on earth was meant to be going on in this surreal instalment with the giant floating white hands. To give producers the benefit of the doubt, and the guilty party was Omicron Group's Berlin-based subsidiary, Voltage, it's likely that the fading letters at the end was just a very unfortunate accident, which most people would have never even spotted. I don't know, if there's an advert and the N-word comes up on the screen, you'd be like, guys, does that, does that, does that, does that, I mean, does it say what I think it says? Or am I, I mean, it does, it does, right? And people will be like, yeah, it does, it does. That is dead, it is. Let's go. And the initial response from Volkswagen's social media marketing team on Instagram was pretty defensive. They reckoned that they were surprised and shocked that their Instagram story could be so misunderstood. However, the defense soon shifted gears quite rapidly when the head of sales for Volkswagen brand, Jürgen Stackmann, revealed his feelings after somebody sent him the link. My first thought was, this must be a fake. My second thought was, someone has hacked our account. The only conclusion you could draw was that the video was racist. I was deeply shocked and asked myself, was it sabotage, was it intentional, or have we really made such a huge blunder unintentionally? I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. I do think this was probably unintentional. I don't think any company 
Even if they're like, even if this guy, there's a team of like super racists at Volkswagen, they're not gonna be like, let's make a super racist ad for our company that we have jobs at. They're just gonna be like, shut the f up and try not to be racist. Because <laughs> they like having money and jobs and that. It seems to be the latter, Jurgen. Volkswagen's chief marketing officer accepted responsibility for the act, but nobody got fired after it was announced that there would be no sacrificial lamb. And Volkswagen apologized profusely in a statement which declared, Oh shit, I'm sorry. We fully understand the disgust and anger in response to the video. It's quite clear that the video is wrong and distasteful. It's probably a good job that Voltage wasn't given 20 seconds to play with. God knows what else they would have squeezed into this one. The King of Shame When it comes to cooking up purposefully controversial promotions sprinkled with a healthy dollop of shock tactics and poor taste, Burger King is probably in a league of its own. They just can't seem to help themselves. They don't openly invite trouble. They let him jump the queue, wait on him, hand on foot courtesy of the house, and then set the other tables on fire. Yeah, we've Burger King often gets blazed fairly regularly. For example, in 2009, they decided the best way to get more UK customers calling in for breakfast was to launch a new website called Singing in the Shower, which they dubbed the world's first guilt-free webcam. Except the nudity. That's maybe an issue. Every morning at 9.30, a different woman dressed in a skimpy breakfast-themed bikini would perform a dreadful rendition of a popular song while shaking her bits to the hits. I mean, if you were like an adult themed company this doesn't sound like a terrible idea but you're burger king aren't you aren't you remember who you are burger king so uh, slobbering viewers got to vote on the song selection and the bikini choice the day before and the bikini top with the two fried eggs always went down a storm you could enter a fun competition to win a hot date with one of the shower babes although this would probably turn out to be a bit of a disappointment it was just a 10 minute shared breakfast down at the leicester square branch in london the slightly disturbing and voyeuristic website proved to be a semi-hit drawing in 30,000 unique viewers within the first week but it's difficult to see what it was trying to achieve as it wasn't promoting any new products or deals and i'm wondering how exactly would inspire viewers to pop down to Burger King for a sausage and egg sandwich. A Burger King spokesman admitted that the laddish promotion was intentionally targeted at men. Well done, you admitted something that was blindingly obvious to, well, everybody. Congratulations. Uh, as breakfast is a male-centric audience for Burger King. Fascinating. So you heard it here first. Women don't eat breakfast. No. Well, I mean, apparently they don't at Burger King, and it sounds like they're not welcome. Am I right, Peter? In the very same year, they made another curious decision when promoting a new SpongeBob SquarePants kids meal complete with funky free toys and giveaways and shit. For this one, they created a parody video of the Sir Mix-a-Lot hit Baby's Got Back, in which some guy dressed as the Burger King sings about how much he likes square butts as a group of female dancers in tight shorts cavort and gyrate around him. Burger King took the sex sell section of uh, whichever MBA came up with this very seriously. The twist is that they've got phone books or something shoved down the bag of their shorts to make their butts look square. In the artistic peak of the commercial is a scene where the creepy Burger King gets out a tape measure to closely assess the size and squareness of one of the dancers' bottoms while he's going on. The campaign for a commercial-free childhood went nuts over this camp commercial as they claimed that Burger King were trying to promote junk food and SpongeBob SquarePants toys to kids using objectified and highly sexualized images of women. Yes, I, uh, I mean, normally I think these people are like, you've got too much time in your hands. Stop complaining. But in this case, I am with them. Well done. Good job. Maybe that's a bit over the top reaction. Eh, others suggested that it was just a bit of harmless fun. But it does seem as if Burger King was purposefully trying to wind up a big chunk of the audience by producing an inappropriate commercial for a kid's meal, which had nothing whatsoever to do with SpongeBob SquarePants or toys or meals. Yeah, don't advertise stuff for kids in a sexual manner whatever that sexual manner might be it's just weird isn't it let's just keep those two things entirely separate i mean it seems obvious doesn't it doesn't it i'll tell you somebody who probably doesn't frequent burger king very often lakshmi the hindu goddess of wealth and good fortune <laughs> Well, this video is suddenly taking a turn. The four-armed deity is a sacred figure of Hinduism, a mostly vegetarian religion, with cows as a sacred animal. In fact, nearly all the ingredients of a Texican Whopper would be frowned upon by Lakshmi and strict followers of Hinduism, as it contains a beef cow patty, beef chili con carne slice. What the hell is a chili con carne slice? How do you have a slice of chili con carne? It's like a slice of milk. <laughs> weird and egg-based mayonnaise even the onions would make the eyes of some hindus waters water as they're believed to inflame passions ah yes onions famous for inflaming passions so you can definitely imagine the outrage when a print ad ran in spain depicting an image of 
the revered deity Lakshmi slapped on top of a forbidden Texan whopper alongside a uh, tagline which translates as the snack is sacred. That is absolutely insane. Although it was only a small-scale printout, this proved to be one of Burger King's most controversial misfires yet, as did the potential to offend literally millions of Hindus. And despite the local placement of the ad, it didn't take long to go viral on the internet and provoke a global shit This is the sort of thing that an extremely edgy brand can do. And Burger King, I get maybe you're trying to be extremely edgy, but it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't, does it? I don't know why. No one can explain it. Maybe someone who's smarter than me can explain it. but. Just stop trying to be edgy. You're Burger King. Just stick with the dude with the crown. I mean, it's kind of shit. But Burger King, you're great. You're great. I love you. You make great food. A typical response came from a Spanish Hindu named Monica Pahalwani, who complained, I was horrified to walk by a Burger King store in my neighborhood to discover an image of the same deity that I worship at my home altar displayed so disrespectfully promoting a meat sandwich. A multinational corporation with a global presence should be more than aware of how truly repelling an advertisement could be to Hindus. Burger King usually laugh off this kind of reaction and chalk it up to another successful headline generator, but on this rare, grilled occasion... But a bum bum. Uh, they were forced to apologize for any offense caused. Who? Why? They were forced this time by the law? Like, normally they don't, so why? And quickly withdrew the blasphemous ad from circulation. Great job. Lakshmi was unavailable for comment as she was still trying to figure out if having forearms is of any benefit whatsoever outside of a basketball court. <laughs> Such a random end. McDonald's heel shattered families. Burger King may get a kick out of courting controversy, but even they would have to hand over the crown to their golden arch rivals, McDonald's, when it comes to creating one of the most shameless promotions in history. All oh, this is going to be good. It's also the last entry. McDonald's released a 90 second monstrosity of a TV. 90 seconds is a super long advert. In 2017, but the weird in the UK. But the weird thing is that the first 70 seconds actually seem quite moving and poignant until it gets to a bit when you realize you're watching McDonald's commercial. Is this the one? It's about some family and the family having a great time and all of this. And then at the end, it's like McDonald's. I vaguely remember this. When was this? Oh no, 2017. Nah, my one would have been when I was a kid. It was way long ago. The ad tells the story of a young kid who's been sadly rifling through a box of possessions belonging to his father who clearly passed away a long time ago. Over the course of the commercial, the bereaved kid then wanders around with his mother asking questions about his late dad in a bid to find out what they have shared in common. Wait, I swear this is the ad, but I've seen this, but it felt like I saw it a long time ago. No, Danny's right, it was 2017. So I must have seen it online or something at some point. Maybe for a video that I made. But it feels like, I swear, maybe there was another one like a long time ago when I was a kid about McDonald's and Happy Families or something confusing this with. On the face of it, it seems they share very little in common. Dad was good at sports. No, this is the advert! I don't know, this is not interesting, Simon. You've just obviously, you thought you saw it a long time ago, but you saw it more, um, what, four years ago? I don't know, it feels like longer than that. Move on, Simon, this is boring. What are you talking about? Just get on with the script pack, boy. Dad was good at sports. The young kid's hopeless. Dad wore nice, shiny shoes, whereas the kid is a dirty scrubber. Dad was popular with the girls, but the young kid is clearly not getting attention in that department. But then comes the crushing reveal. The kid and mum wander into a branch of McDonald's and settle down at a table to enjoy a nice fillet of fish burger. Mum smiles and says, that was your dad's favorite too. Suddenly the kid has achieved dinner peace thanks to Ronald McDonald and his stinky fish. Christ at a popsicle, that was a low blow. <laughs> when promoting the fillet of fish burger, McDonald's could have drawn, and yeah, I know Americans be like, Simon, it's fillet of fish. And I'm like, yeah, brilliant. In your country, where I'm not from. So, when promoting the fillet of fish burger, McDonald's could have drawn attention to the white hokey or pollock fish, the crispy breadcrumbs or the possessed or the processed cheddar cheese or the tangy tartar store, but, sauce, but instead they went for the angle of suggesting that the fast food helped heal a grieving child and his family. The backlash was brutal and a number of UK bereavement charities were quick to voice their disapproval after claiming they had received countless complaints from grieving partners, uh, partners and parents. The Grief Encounter organization noted the ruthlessness of using the topic of childhood bereavement as a way of trying to cope with young families and children and flog them a bit of fish. Yeah, uh, I'm f***ing with you on that one. It is distasteful and it is cheapening a terrible thing. So, uh, yeah, f*** McDonald's. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, allegedly. The Advertising Standards Authority even launched an investigation into the cynical and exploitative commercials, although no further action was deemed necessary after McDonald's apologized and withdrew the commercial with a side promise that they would review our creative process to ensure the situation never occurs again. And I'm and that sort of result I'm entirely satisfied with. I think that's good. An apology and withdrawal, it was inappropriate, people told you it was, and you're gonna review it. Good. Excellent. I think that's a brilliant way to handle it. In comparison, Burger King's commercials appear as pure and wholesome as a beautiful lily white virgin trying to blag some free nibbles down a Jeju Island. Oh, that's a callback. This has been an episode of Business Blaze. Thank you for watching. Oh, master.